Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Julie and today we are talking about design rules. Specifically, all of those design rules that are made to be broken. You know what they say about rules. Rules are meant to be broken. But what if you don't even know the rules? Design rules that are put in place are meant to be a roadmap to give you clear directions on the entire planning process. We know that interior design can get very costly, especially if you're making those mistakes and have little mishaps along the way. Watch this video so you're no longer following dated, old-fashioned, and misinformed design rules. Today we'll be talking about all of those design rules that relate to color, scale and proportion, picking out furniture, flooring, and of course all of the finishing touches to create your dream space. Let's talk about the first design rule that you absolutely need to break. It is picking paint first. Show of hands, who loves all of the paint colors in their home? I am a professional designer. I do this for a living and even I don't love all the colors in my home. Paint is the most inexpensive way to transform a room from top to bottom. But what the pros don't tell you is that you should absolutely be picking paint last. Now, why do you need to pick paint last? You need to pick paint last so that all of the disparate elements in a room would be cohesive. Let's say you've picked out this fabulous area rug. You've pulled the entire color palette of the room from the area rugs. You have your sofa in place. You have your accent chairs in place. You have this really beautiful coffee table in the middle of your living room. You have window treatments that echo the same sentiment and the lively colors that are found in the area rug. Now what about paint? Now, if you chose a paint color first, you're most likely picking something that's really neutral that you think would vibe with the potential of the space that you are designing. However, that is not how the pros do it. Typically, someone hires an interior designer and they want a room fleshed out from top to bottom. That means you are hiring me to pick every single element in a room. And that's how I design. I pick out all of the furniture, all of the materials, all of the finishes first, and then I find a coordinating paint color so that everything ties in together. Now, of course, in any type of remodel, renovation, or redesign, the paint is gonna go on first because who wants to paint a room when all of your furniture is in there? No one wants to get paint all over their furniture. So of course you would have to move everything out if you have a fully furnished room to start to paint. The contractor wants a blank slate. They want to be working with an empty room. So of course they are going to ask for paint colors first, but if you haven't designed the space, then how do you pick that paint color? If you're having trouble choosing a wall color that really vibes with your aesthetic and space, definitely check out my entire paint playlist. I have so many videos in there that are catered to my favorite neutral paint colors, my favorite neutral paint colors part two. I've also broken down paint colors to match with wood trim and of course exterior paint color combinations to boost curb appeal. So definitely check out my paint and color palettes playlist if you're still stuck on color. The next rule that you should absolutely break is maintaining a specific color palette. Well, of course you're talking to me here. I am a maximalist. I believe that pink is a neutral. Leopard, leopard, leopard. I believe that leopard is a neutral. So to me, I love color. I love bold color palettes. I also really love muted color palettes. And you know what? I also love no color palettes at all and kind of letting your space evolve to align with the different phases that you are in your life. I've always loved color. I always love to be surrounded by a lot of color, but it doesn't mean that I want to be surrounded by a lot of color all of the time. I have these pockets in my home with bright, bold color. And then I also have entire rooms that are dedicated to just warm, neutral, vibes, specifically my home office, which I'm sitting in right now, and also my primary bedroom. The pros always tell you to start with a very specific color palette because it's a good foundation. If you chose one or two kind of main colors for a space and two or three accent colors for a space, then now all of a sudden you have a color palette of five different colors. But hey, guess what? Every single one of these colors have a tint to them. They have a tone to them. They have a shade to them. If you added one whites to the color, the space is going to feel lighter. If you added black pigment to any of the shades, the space is going to feel a little bit darker and moodier. 
So while you should definitely maintain a specific color palette as a jumping off point, don't be afraid to go bold and introduce all of these fun, fresh, funky colors in other areas of your home. Remember that you don't want your color palette to limit you. So if you find an art piece that you love but is not within your color palette, just buy it. If you love it, you will find a way to use it in your home no matter what it vibes with. This is one of those color rules that I'm sure you've heard before. It is to not use dark colors in small spaces. Specifically, don't use dark paint on the walls in smaller rooms or windowless rooms. Now this is one of those design rules that I break all the time. For me, I love a dark, sexy, cavernous, moody space, especially when all of the finishes that are in the space contrast with the walls or the ceiling. If you have a small space, a small room that doesn't have a window or lacks a lot of natural light, dark colors by definition actually recede, which means it has the capacity to visually expand a room. We're talking about all of those paint and color tricks that the pros know and implement all the time. My favorite designer's trick is decking out a small powder bathroom, especially one without a window in really dark colors. It could be dark paint, it could be dark wallpaper. I love to kind of lean in to that cavernous vibe if I want a really sexy space. However, if you have a small space and you love dark colors, but you don't want the space to feel cavernous, then you absolutely need to specify furniture pieces in the space that highly contrast from your dark walls. We're talking about light furnishings, a light colored bed, a light accent chair, light wood finishes, light metal accents. If you have dark navy or black walls, think about stainless steel accents in the space. Think about light oak furniture, light upholstery, brass finishes, brush nickel finishes, any finish or color that's going to bounce around that light in the room so that all of the four walls could recede and stay dark. While we're on the topic of paint, another design rule that is absolutely made to be broken is that ceilings should be painted white. I have never, ever, 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 ever <laughs> in my design career painted a ceiling white. Or more specifically, I have never left a ceiling white. Here's why. The ceiling is the fifth wall in interior design. It is another opportunity for you to make a very bold design statement. It doesn't mean that the ceiling has to be a bold statement. It just means that the ceiling should also be addressed like another wall, which should also be prioritized in the grand scheme of the design. A design tip that I always share when trying to specify a ceiling color is to choose a color that's just a couple of shades lighter than the walls. If you want the space to feel light, bright, and airy, you could go all the way up to the top of the chip if the wall color is more towards the bottom shades. You could also choose a complementary accent color that is pulled from some of the artwork, accessories, finishes, and materials in the room. If you really want to make a statement in the room and you want to go bold, try wall covering or even a textured finish on the ceiling. I love exposed beam ceilings. I love coffered ceilings. I love tray ceilings when they're not overdone. I mean, that could look so gaudy. The idea is to get your eyes to travel around the room and to not land on just one spot. You want the eyes to travel onto the walls, up to the ceiling, and be surprised by this really amazing unexpected element. So definitely don't leave those ceilings white or else I'm gonna think that it's a mistake. The next rule that you should absolutely be breaking in interior design is that wood tones should match. This design tip is so dated to me. It's such an old fashioned tip. It's kind of right on the lines with all furniture should be matching sets. So we're gonna be talking about matchy, matchy decor in the space. There's nothing in design that feels more one note, more one dimensional than matchy, matchy. I don't like it, I don't do it, and here's why. When you enter a room, you want your eyes to travel all around the space. You want the finishes to excite you. You wanna mix and match wood tones in a room so it feels fresh, it feels dynamic, it feels lived in, really natural and organic. You don't step out in your yard and see the same wood tone on one tree as the next, as the next, and your plants. And then the rose bush has the same wood tones as your palm tree. That just doesn't exist in nature. Look around you and see what the environment and your surroundings have to offer. Cue into how you want your interior space to feel by borrowing some elements from the outdoors. 
Rich walnut is one of my favorite woods to use in the home. I love how old world it feels. I also love that it can feel very contemporary depending on the different elements that I pair and combine it with. However, just because I love a medium to rich walnut doesn't mean I want it all throughout the space. How is that particular wood stain or wood tone going to feel special when there's so much of it in the home? So a good rule of thumb when you mix and match wood tones is to mix and match tones that are in the same color family. Warm woods have undertones of yellow, oranges, and reds. Cool woods have undertones of blues, greens, and grays. But honestly, I don't even want to get too technical. Just go with what feels right. If the wood tones feel right in the space to you, then go for it. I don't think anyone's going to walk into your home and say, hey, I can't believe that you mixed a cool wood tone with a warm one. That just doesn't vibe at all. Like that's not going to happen. So just go with your gut. Speaking of matchy matchy, here is another design rule to break. It is that all bathroom fixtures should be identical. I don't even know who made up this design rule, but I hear it all the time. Shouldn't all of your bathrooms have matching fixtures? I'm like, no, to me, that is so lazy. I love every single room in the home to have its own personality and to have its own vibe. Yes, that also means all of the bathrooms. Let's say you have three different bathrooms in the home. Do you really want the same faucet, the same handles, the same hardware, the same tub spout, the same shower fixtures, the same handheld shower accessories? I mean, if you do, then obviously that is your design intent, more power to you. But to me, I want every space to come alive and feel special with its own personality. That means one bathroom can feel really modern and industrial with maybe black hardware. And another one can feel sophisticated and glam with brass hardware. And maybe another one feel like really edgy and cool with chrome finishes. So think about your design intent, all of those feelings that you want a space to elicit. Yes, even the bathroom. And then think about mixing the finishes in your space from bathroom to bathroom bathroom or even bathroom to kitchen that adds more personality to your home and makes each space feel different. The next design rule to break is keeping the same metal finishes throughout your home. I feel like you need to see more examples of this rule in action before you can make a decision. We used to see those same metal finishes from room to room. If I'm using that bathroom, for example, you have a couple of elements in there that have metal in it. You've got your bathroom faucet, you have your handles, you have your hardware, you have your tub spout, you have your shower fixtures. You also might even have a metal mirror in there. You might also even have metal lighting in there. Does that mean you will only choose one finish to repeat throughout the space? You can if that is your design intent, but for me, I love to mix metals. I have favorite combinations that I'll share here so that you can take a screenshot of it just in case you're looking for new metal combinations to try. I hope that when it comes time to making some of these design decisions in your home, you're thinking, would Julie do that? So the next tip and the next rule to break is matchy, matchy furniture sets. This one is actually a very, very, very old fashioned dated traditional design rule where you should buy all matching furniture or furniture that comes in a set. Now, let me tell you, if you want to take a cue from your childhood toys, remember that even your Lego sets don't match. They're meant to be configured in so many different ways. They're meant to be mixed and matched so that you could build this really incredible environment. Now, think of that same sentiment when it comes to designing your home. You want to mix and match pieces so it helps tell your story. If you're out shopping and you fell in love with this really beautiful cushy sofa and it also came with this amazing love seat and a really cute accent chair and you're thinking, oh my gosh, all I have to do is buy this entire set and that matching coffee table, then boom, brand new living room in just one easy decision. That is definitely a surefire way for you to furnish your home really fast. However, does that furniture set really tell your story where you are and where you hope to go? Anyone can go out and pick a matching furniture set, but it really takes an editor's eye to curate the pieces that speak to you and your current aesthetic. The next design rule to break is choosing the largest piece of furniture first. In the living room, that largest piece of furniture could be your sofa or your sectional. In the bedroom, it is your bed or your bed frame. In the dining room, it's the dining table. And in the kitchen, it's your appliances. Choosing the largest piece of furniture definitely has its pros. 
people used to say that you don't want to do anything until you pick the largest piece of furniture in the room. But if you have a roadmap in place and you have your space sketched out with all of your measurements of all of the walls and the measurement of the overall seating group, then you kind of know scale and proportion. You'll understand that you want to stick within a specific parameter for your sofa. And you also have certain measurements in mind for your accent chairs, your coffee tables, and some of your accessories. But if you already have that plan in place, I say choose what inspires you first. Maybe it's the table lamp that you found first. Maybe it's this fabulous accent chair. You don't have to choose the largest piece of furniture first because you wanna go by what inspires you. I am all about going with your gut when it comes to interior design. I'm all about understanding the rules and then breaking them with intent. So choose pieces that will inspire the rest of the design and help make all of those small decisions easier for you. The next design rule to break, is to install the same flooring throughout the entire home. This rule is one of those really old traditional dated ones where you want it to have the same flooring so that you can maintain consistency throughout the home. This is a great idea if you have a smaller home, an open concept floor plan, where you want the space to feel larger, bigger, brighter, then of course you don't want any of those flooring transitions to break up a home. But newsflash everyone, some of us crave design. We want to see certain rooms have their own design perspective. We want to see really beautiful spaces, rooms that lean really heavily on design and that were outfitted from the ground up. There's nothing wrong with having a really fabulous statement floor in your entry foyer and transitioning to your general flooring that's throughout the common areas of the living room, dining room, hallways. And you turn the corner into all of the private areas and maybe the bedrooms have carpet maybe all of the bathrooms have their own tile their own patterns so if you want a really fresh and dynamic space think about flooring as another design decision that you need to make when it comes to all of the different finishes in the home another design rule to break is no hardwood in the kitchen I know what you're thinking wood wet area kitchen spills stains oh my gosh that is just a disaster waiting to happen but let me tell you who here knows someone who installed hardwood in their home in the kitchen? I do. I do it all the time for my clients. I actually have clients who specifically request hardwood or engineered hardwood in their kitchens. And here's why. Modern day finishes have so many technological upgrades built right in. The engineered hardwoods of today actually have water impenetrable membranes that are coated right on top of the engineered wood. So these hardwood planks can actually resist those stains and spills. I mean, you can't let water sit on your kitchen floors and have it sitting for, let's say, 24 hours at a time. I do have a lot of clients that specifically request hardwood and engineered wood in their kitchen. It's mainly because they want consistent flooring throughout the home and that's what's in the common areas. They don't want to break it up and have a transition where the kitchen is, especially if it's an open concept space. You kind of just want that flooring to flow throughout. And some of these households are Asian households. I mean, we're talking about an Asian cook, an Asian chef in the house. You know there's going to be a lot of grease, a lot of oil, a lot of sauces, a lot of soy sauce. I mean, there's definitely stuff that has the potential to stain in the kitchen. So the next time that you're out shopping or sourcing for a hardwood or engineered hardwood, definitely look for some of those labels and planks that have waterproof membranes built right on top. They could be labeled as waterproof, water impenetrable, water resistant. So it's one less thing for you to worry about in the kitchen. The last design rule that you should absolutely be breaking is a painting an accent wall to add visual interest to a room. If you are a longtime follower of the channel, you will know that I do not like accent walls. The reason I don't like accent walls is less about the idea of them and more about the execution of it. I don't even call it an accent wall. I actually call it a feature wall. If you have a wall in your home that you want to add visual interest to, you want to accent it in some way to draw attention to it, to make it become a feature of the room, then you should definitely factor it into the entire design intent of the room. The accent wall could be wall colored, it could be textured, you could have some sort of molding on it, you can have a board and batten installation on it. There are so many different ways for you to draw attention to a feature in the room, especially one huge wall, by not just painting it. If you remember from my very first design rule to break, painting is actually the cheapest and most effective way for you to transform a space. But hey, guess what? It's also the cheapest way for you to cheapen the look of a room as well, especially when that accent is an afterthought. 
That's it for today's video. I hope you got some really great ideas on how to design your space while breaking all of the design rules. My goal from this video is to help you use your space in really fresh and creative ways, especially in a small home where you should purge, declutter, and organize first before you get to the design. Include pieces that are functional, stylish, and interesting, something that tells your story. Remember that there should always be a hierarchy within the space. Minimalist rooms should start with one focal point and trickle down to the accessories. Maximalist rooms should possess a cohesive dialogue between all of the elements. But if you only follow one design rule, let it be this. Do what you love and you will always get it right. I want to leave you with one of my absolute favorite quotes in life and design. Whatever you dream you could do, begin it. Boldness has genius, magic, and power in it. Begin it now. If you like this type of content, you want more design rules to break, please give this video a thumbs up. Comment below and let me know if there are any design rules that you want to break, but you're not sure how. Hopefully I can give you a better roadmap and clearer directions so you can get it right. Share this video with anyone you know who loves interior design as much as we do, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Click that little notification bell to be notified of new videos that we drop every single Tuesday. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I'll see you next week.